People have been asking me for a while now to cover the Godzilla Monster Monster Creepypasta, aka the NES Godzilla. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the giant reptilian monster called Godzilla, most likely from the most recent movie called Godzilla vs. Kong, where you see this giant monkey basically sucker punch Godzilla. But I imagine fewer of you are actually familiar with Godzilla Monster or Monsters because it came out back in 1988, so it's even older than I am. Now before I can explain the creepypasta to you, I need to explain how the actual video game worked. Now in the original video game, the player assumed the role of Godzilla or Mothra, fighting giant monsters across different planets, with the goal being to reach planet X so that you could fight the final boss, who was called King Ghidorah. The gameplay would have you start on Earth, represented by this hexagonal map where you could move Godzilla and Mothra around the board. Each hex contained a level where you would basically have to fight through a bunch of enemies, the goal being to clear all the trash in order to get to the other side of the map where you could fight the big boss of the world and move on to the next. Now if you are a true Godzilla fan, you probably already know that the technical name for these monsters are Kaiju, which translates out to Strange Beast. And the seven monsters that you would have to fight as you travel through these worlds, sometime repeatedly, are going to be Gazora, Magara, Varen, Baragon, Hedora, Gigan, and Mecha Godzilla, with the final kaiju being King Ghidorah, of course. Now that we understand the basis of the actual game, we can dive into the Creepypasta, which was created 20 years after the game was released. The Creepypasta was uploaded by a person named Cosby Daff in 2011, and to this day, the Creepypasta is still deemed one of the most well done Creepypastas ever made, partly due to the story, but also because of the custom artwork that was created by Cosby Daff. Now the creepypasta is told from the view of a young man named Zachary who received Godzilla Monster of Monsters from his childhood friend Billy. Zachary had owned the game when he was a kid, but he ended up trading it for another game, and now that he's an adult, he wanted to experience the nostalgia of playing the game again. Everything seemed to be fine when Zachary was able to play the game again until he made it to the first boss. The game started to glitch while he was fighting Gazora, and the glitching was so bad that Zach had to restart the game, probably giving the cartridge the old blowing trick. After the reset, everything in the game seemed to be running fine and he was able to complete all the missions on Earth and move over to Mars. Now on Mars, Zachary ended up having to fight Gazora again and the glitching came back but even worse this time. And what was creepy about it is that Gazora's eyes started to appear all over the screen and weirdly enough, they kind of looked like unknown from Pokemon but red instead of black. And just like most creepypasta main characters, Zachary completely ignores this red flag. Next, Zachary has to fight against Magara and a weird occurrence happens once Magara is defeated. The character literally just falls apart like it was made out of marbles. And this is weird because this isn't how it actually happened in the original game. And since Zachary actually played the original, he knows that this is out of place. And what was even stranger is that the next monster that he had to fight is Titanosaurus, who is not even in the original game at all. Zachary rationalizes this by telling himself that maybe he has a special version of the game that has additional monsters in it, which in his defense is more logical than thinking that the game at this moment is cursed or haunted. As Zachary continues through the game, we get to a screen that is supposed to say Jupiter, but it instead says Pathos, which is a completely new planet, meaning that it also wasn't in our original game at all. At this moment, Zachary finally starts to put together that something may be wrong because too many things are different than in the original game. And as if on cue, we see a new monster called Biolante, which is a huge deal. Technically, Biolante wasn't even created until 1989, which means that there is no way they should be in this game at all, considering that it was released in 1988. And for those of you that don't know, Biolante is the monster that looks like a combination of a Venus flytrap and an alligator. Now, even though Zachary was starting to understand that this was all too weird, he also still believed that he may just have a special edition of the game. But his doubts grew more and more as he noticed that the level design started to change, now having an eerie red moon and almost no enemies. It was like most life on this new planet didn't exist. And the only enemies that did pop up had designs that were obviously not meant for this game. And funny enough, they kind of look like the monsters from Hell Paradise, fire anime if y'all haven't watched it. Now, one of the major moments occurred during the chase level, which is probably the most iconic part of this creepypasta. This is where Zachary's mood drastically changes from excitement at this nostalgia to actually being worried. The chase scene introduces Red, which looks like a mix between a flayed man and a spider. Flayed just basically means that you've had your skin peeled off, by the way. Now, even though Zach is a bit weary here, he chalks it up to saying that he must just have a hack copy of the game, possibly created by his friend Billy. But as the story continues, it gets harder and harder for him to justify having a special copy or a hack copy of his game because it seems like this game is starting to like break into reality almost. Now the next five worlds we see are actually called Trans, Dementia, Entropy, 
Exodus, and Zenith, which replaced some of the original planets. With these new worlds, we are introduced to Face, who appears on Hexus with a question mark. And on each of these planets, Face basically gives you a yes or no quiz. And some of these questions are easy, like is peanut butter good, while others are very invasive. One of the questions that really stood out to me was when Zack is asked if he likes hurting people. While Face never actually hurts Zachary in any of these mini games, I think it's safe to say that Face is quite creepy. After that, Zack has an encounter with Red again, but this time it's not a clear run. He has a bunch of platforms around him that he has to avoid or jump over in order to get away from Red because I think he understands that fighting him would just mean death. And luckily, Zack is able to outrun Red, and when he finally wins, he yells out, not this time, a-ho. And this is where the lines between the video game and reality start to blur a bit, because almost as if Red heard the taunt, he stops running and he turns his head and looks right at Zachary. It's very much like when Deadpool breaks the fourth wall and looks right at the audience and starts talking to us, but Red actually wants to do you harm. And with that, Zack is obviously scared when this happens because this is obviously very creepy. But soon after that, he shakes off that fear and just dismisses it as a coincidence. He doesn't believe that this game could actually hear him. Because if we're being honest, Zachary is actually a reasonable person here and he doesn't believe that anything supernatural is actually happening with this video game. And to this creepypasta's credit, this is definitely more believable than somebody automatically believing that they're living in a world where there's haunted video games. Because if we're all being honest, we probably also wouldn't think that the game is haunted either. Now, after completing a few other levels, Zack ends up on a world called Entropy, which seems to be more tranquil than some of the other worlds that we've encountered. And what I mean by this is that there are no enemies on this world, and it's just a normal night under a full moon. Now, Zack should have known that this is too good to be true, because soon after exploring a little bit, the moon literally cracks open like an egg, and a curled human falls from the sky and drops into the water. And a few seconds later, a truly monstrous creature comes out called the Moon Beast. And as crazy as that is, the weirdest part about this is what starts to happen to Zachary's TV after. Words pop up on the screen that say Melissa off yourself and then the screen gets covered with what looks like a bunch of red writings which turns out to actually be Red's face. And this is where we learn about Zachary's history and who Melissa is. Basically when Zach was in middle school he had a girlfriend named Melissa and this young lady had a mental disorder that caused her to have moments where her body would become rigid like a plank of wood and her voice and face would lose all emotion. Some people have suggested that this is likely schizophrenia but I am not a doctor so I can't really say but some of the symptoms do match up if you look it up. Now, when Melissa would come back to her senses, her body would immediately start to tremble and she would just sit there and cry for minutes at a time. Zach was only a middle school kid, so obviously he didn't know how to help her, but he would do his best to try to keep her company and to comfort her. The two of them especially loved to hang out at night, sitting in the grass and looking up at the stars. And one night, as the two of them were hanging out, Melissa froze again, this time looking directly at the moon. And then she suddenly got up and ran into oncoming traffic. The saddest part here is that young Zach witnessed it all, even the part where the truck hit her head on. Zach was looking into her eyes as the truck slammed into her, but there was nothing that he could do to help her. And as you can imagine, the visual has haunted him for years. The last part of the story shows a map with a cross symbol on it. And when Zach goes to it, he's introduced to a blue humanoid figure called the Angel. But Red appears soon after and he eats the Angel, basically just swallowing it whole. And as the story continues, we also learn that Face has also been killed. Zach continues to progress through the game, fighting more and more weird looking abominations until he finally gets back to Red. Now, if the Melissa stuff wasn't enough to make Zack believe that this was all real, the fight with Red definitely did it. Every attack that Red landed, Zack felt in real life. And this is a big deal because Red not only slashes out at you, but he also has a flamethrower type move. And I can only imagine that feeling like you're being burned alive is brutal. And the worst part of all this is that Zack is no longer in control over his body. The only thing that he could do is blink, breathe and move his fingers so that he can actually play the game. So basically he has to either win this fight or he dies. As Red is easily killing all of Zack's monsters, he drops a bombshell, telling Zack that he's the one that actually killed Melissa. Red is basically the physical embodiment of her mental illness. After revealing this, Red unhinges his jaw like a snake and he picks up Godzilla and just swallows him whole. At this point, Zack knows that it's all over from him and he's content to let death take him. But before he blacks out completely, a miracle happens. The angel that was eaten earlier returns and is revealed to be Melissa. And sadly, she tells Zack that Red wasn't content with simply killing her, but now he's even torturing her soul. And if Zack gives up, Red will do the same thing to him. 
Before fading away, Melissa gives Zack one more monster that he can use to fight Red, essentially giving him an extra life. The monster's name is Acacius, the Golden Light, and with this new monster, he is able to beat Red, although it was tough. The story ends with Zack obviously surviving and going to confront Billy about this cursed game, but it is revealed that nobody is playing a trick on him or is setting him up in any way. The game simply has some special bond with him, probably because of Melissa. And this gets to the only part of this creepypasta that I really didn't care for, and that is the fact that Zack ends up putting the game up for sale on eBay because he didn't want the responsibility of owning it. It just seemed very odd to me because the spirit of his girlfriend might still be in there and she's the only reason that he survived the ordeal. I felt like he should have kept it as like a keepsake or just to act like a guardian of the game just in case her soul does reside in there still. But with that being said, what did you think of this creepypasta? If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out this video on the screen here. Subscribe to Daily Become a member of the Orse Force and we'll see you next time with another video. Peace, peace.